Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Space and time can play funny tricks with a man. For instance, six weeks ago, an American flying boat was en route from Singapore to Manila. Over the South China Sea, a thousand miles from nowhere, someone entered the pilot's compartment. Hey, what's the big idea? Looks like nobody comes in here without a purpose. Oh, wait a minute. No! No! Oh. from again. But six weeks later, on 1,500 miles away, on a dirty side street in Saigon, in French Indochina, two men stood looking at the body of a third. Mon Dieu, it, it is Professor Gibbon. But this is incredible. I do not understand, Inspector Abbe. Jean, this man you see lying there died six weeks ago. But this is not possible, Monsieur l'Inspecteur. His body is still warm. Nevertheless, Jean, it must be so. I know him. He is American. And he was on board the plane that disappeared at sea six weeks ago. Then, 12 hours later, halfway across the world in Budapest, I got a phone call from New York City. Hello. Ken, there's a plane waiting for you at the airport. It'll fly you to Tehran. From there, a charter job will go nonstop to Karachi, India. Your papers are cleared to there. The rest of the arrangements you'll have to make yourself. Nice work, Chief. But now, uh, stop making like a travel bureau and tell me what's up. I don't know. That's what I want you to find out. Yeah, where? In Saigon. Ken, you remember a flight from Singapore to Manila? That missing plane? Sure. What about it? Well, that plane was carrying some of the finest scientists our country ever had. All of them experts on the Pacific. They were just completing a round-trip survey of our mandated islands. A darned important survey. I know. It's about time some two million natives out there got a crack at real civilization, freedom, and education. Yeah, but, Chief, why uh, call me about it here in Budapest? Well, I just got a cablegram from Police Inspector Abbey in Saigon. Abbey. Yeah, Professor Gibbons, one of the anthropologists aboard that plane, turned up there a few hours ago. Dead. A knife in his back. Murdered. Uh. Think you can make sense out of that? I'll let you know, Chief. From somewhere in French Indochina. <laughs> Pardon, Mr. Thurston. I'm Inspector Beaumont of the French police. Welcome to Saigon. Thanks. Only, uh, I didn't know I was expected. <laughs> May we, monsieur? We have been notified. Our facilities are at your disposal, including one automobile. This way, please. Chief Inspector Abbe has been awaiting your arrival with great anticipation. Abbe, now he's the one who identified Professor Gibbons, isn't he? Mm, oui, monsieur. The inspector had met Monsieur Professor by before the war, uh -huh. when he was conducting anthropological expeditions in Cochin, China. So he has more than an official interest in his affairs. Oh, here is my automobile, monsieur. If you will be pleased to enter. Oh, thanks very much. I assure you, the pleasure is entirely mine. Uh. Mr. A. You're coming round, Mr. Thurston. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. <laughs> what goes? You're in the back room of Le Cher Noir, a native cafe here in Saigon. I'm Arlene Nelson. I've just got the ropes around your wrists and ankles. We'll go into the cafe as soon as you're ready. Mm. Short, sweet, and to the point. That's the way I like things to be. Wilmot liked them that way, too. You grow your police inspectors pretty rugged out here. That was a <laughs> gag, Mr. Thurston. Yes. He's not with the police. He owns this place. Lucky for you, I saw his boys carry you in here. Well, what's his interest in me? And yours? The mutual interest of the three of us. The throne of Tainin. Huh? I think we can beat him to it if we work together, Mr. Thurston. Tainin. Two questions, Miss Ivy. Shoot. What makes you think I'm interested in this, uh, this throne? And if I am, why should I, be, why should I string along with you? Two heads are better than one, Ken. Besides, you're smarter than Professor Gibbons was. Uh smart enough to know what to choose when it's between two million dollars and death. Oh, this 
table will do, Ken. The native I want you to meet can see us clearly from here. What makes you think he's going to tell you information about this uh, throne of Tameen? In the game we're playing, Ken, nothing talks but dollars. Two million of them? That figure makes sense. I'm not sure you do, though. When this little business deal is over, I'll try to change your mind. I think you'll find that worth waiting for, don't you? Well, maybe I've taken worth gamble. Eileen! Yeah. Oh. Darling, here you are. It's Todd all Saigon looking for you. Oh, hello, Stuart. This is Ken Thurston. Ken, this is Stuart Harding. Oh, yes. An oil company geologist out here. Thurston, how are you, old man? <laughs> what an introduction. An oil company geologist. You know, I think my burning passion for you is much more noteworthy, my dear. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, that atrocious music. But I'd rather dance to it and try to talk through it. Do you game, Eileen? I think Ken should have something to say about that. Oh, you won't mind, will you, sir? Uh, there's a native soothsayer making the rounds of the table. Have him forecast your future. Might be interesting. Come along, Eileen. All right, Stuart. I'll get rid of him. Be right back, Ken. And may the blessings of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva be upon thee, O noble Saeed. Did you signal to me? Come off it, Pagan. Pagan? Uh, what kind of a peculiar name is this? It's even more peculiar when you went up with Zelschmidt. Mr. Thurston, I would like you to know that the name of Zelschmidt goes back to the dawn of history. If it's such a funny name, how come Mark Anthony Zelschmidt could make time with that cute little cookie Cleopatra? And, and, and how did you know it was me? Pagan, there's not a turban or a fake beard in the world that can hide the dollar signs in your eyes. Huh? What are you doing in Psycho? Well, it's a long, sad story. And, and the saddest part being this is a, a lousy racket. Fortune telling. Boy, there's no future in it. Then give me a reading about the present. Pagan, what do you know about the murder of Professor Gibbons? I didn't do it. I got friends who'll give me an alibi. Can those underworld friends of yours give you information about the throne of T. Neen? Huh? Or its connection with Professor Gibbons and a missing plane over the South China Sea? Mr. Thurston... I haven't heard from nothing about drones, missing planes, or murders. Okay. But something connects with three and I'll... Take on, take a look at that table to the left. At the table to the... Mr. Thurston, I don't think that native over there likes us. Look at how he's glaring. Senator? Don't be funny, he's a decoy. And you know what a decoy is? Yes. Yeah. That's coach in China for torpedo. And torpedoes kill people. And I don't like the way he's looking at us. Mr. Thurston, someone turned out the light. Curse of Shiva, we are funding. Look out, Pagan. Death to the unbeliever. Mr. Thurston, what happened? Why doesn't somebody turn on the light? Why doesn't somebody turn on the light? If you'd only open your eyes, Pagan, you'd see that somebody has. If I'd open my eyes. Oh, you're right. The lights are back on. What was the big idea of setting the table over me? Take a look at my chair. <gasps> that knife right through what, the back of it. The decoy did it. Could be. And it could have been someone else. It could have been Ken, but it wasn't. You sound pretty sure, Eileen. I am. I saw that decoy before the lights went out. He was the man who was going to tell us the information. Apparently changed his mind. Yes, and so have I. Our partnership is dissolved, Ken. Oh? Why the sudden change of heart? If the decoy wanted to play that rough, he must have known you were working for the other side. So from here on in, it's no holes barred, Mr. X. <laughs> Believe me, Mr. Thurston, this is positively, without exaggeration, the finest hotel room in all Saigon. You don't know how lucky you are. I found it for you. For 20 bucks, I didn't need that kind of luck. <laughs> that attitude shows you just don't understand the foreign exchange. Uh, figuring the rates of international interest and... Uh, yeah, save your breath, Pagan. The hotel clerk told me you only gave him $5 for the room. <laughs> he did, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, of course. You wouldn't take the word of that thieving, no-good racketeering hotel clerk against mine, would you? Sure. Oh. You can stop right there, Thurston. Well, our impassioned oil geologist. Oh, Hardy. That's right, Thurston. Glad you remember me. I never forget a face behind a gun. I'm going to make this short and sweet. Stay away from Eileen. What's the matter, jealous? Well, not of you, Thurston. The throne of Tainy. You understand? No. Well, then I'll make it clear. For centuries, men have killed for the jewels in that throne. I'm not going to let you lead Eileen to her death, too. She's harder to try to be led around, Hardy. Or oh, hadn't you noticed? I know. She inherited more than Thor's thunder from her father. Thor's thunder? Yes, the schooner she has down at the docks. The one he used when he was a free-booting pirate. 
I'm not going to let her wind up the way he did. Why not talk it over with her instead of... Uh, all right, let me have that gun. Let go of my arm first and let go. Sure, as soon as you drop it. Uh, oh, all right. Get it, Pico. As good as got. Okay, Hardy. Now let's get some things straight. I don't like guns being waved in my face. I, I guess I had acted like a fool first. I'm sorry. How can I apologize? By answering some questions, fast. What's the throne of Tainin? And what do you know about Professor Gibbon's connection with it? Oh, I thought you knew. The throne is a fabulous legend in Cochin, China. It had been lost for centuries, and Professor Gibbons claimed to have found it just before the war broke out. Go on. Well, as thrones go, it was a comparatively small affair, easy for him to hide away when he left Saigon just before the Japanese invaded. I see. So now it's just sitting somewhere, waiting for someone to find it. And the $2 million worth of jewels encrusted on it. Eileen thinks she can find it? Yes, but she doesn't stand a chance. Not with Beaumont, the Decoit, who almost knifed you and the other murderers and cutthroats who are trying to find it, too. You're not helping here by shoving guns into people's faces, Hardy. I know, I know. I must have been out of my mind. But first, and I do anything, anything in this world to keep her out of trouble over that throne. Then relax and let me take over. I'll do my best to keep everyone out of trouble, including me. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Looking for Eileen Nelson's boat at this hour of night? Is there? Of course. Anybody could tell you that looking at that pretty petunia that she's innocent like a, like a baby. She has nothing to do with nothing. Any better suggestion? Sure. Beaumont. He's the man you want. <laughs> Such a no good. You know, he wouldn't even pay me a salary when I was working at his cafe. Well, that doesn't prove he's guilty of anything. Just sensible. Here's the, here's the boat. Let's go aboard. Thinking aboard a ship... Uh, this way? Uh, what if somebody sees us? Don't worry, Pig. On no lights showing. Probably no one aboard. And then what do you expect to find here anyway? Clues. To what? That gorgeous throne? To the missing American scientist. Let's try the main cabin. That should be it. Go in. <laughs> what did I tell you? There's nothing in here. Well, how can you tell without any light? My natural trust in that Eileen Nelson. I'd rather trust his flashlight. There. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Just like I said, there's... <gasps> Mr. X. Well. It's the throne. That, that's the throne of Tainy. Yeah, all two million bucks worth. Sitting right in the middle of the cabin aboard Eileen's schooner. Now where's your natural trust in her? I won't believe it. Beaumont fooled her. He fooled her into telling him he used this place to hide the throne. It won't wash, Pagan. If anyone's been fooled, it's Beaumont. Look. Look on the floor behind the throne. On the floor behind? <gasps> yeah. With a knife in his heart. unfortunate affair, Monsieur Thurston. Very unfortunate indeed. Especially for Beaumont, Inspector Abbey. If you had only come directly to me upon your arrival in Seguin... Oh, that was the general idea. Only Beaumont and Eileen Nelson put a crimp into it. Yes, so you have told me. But I failed to see the connection between them and the throne of Tainin with your original mission here. I don't see it either, but maybe I can guess. Ah, guesswork is not considered good police practice, Monsieur. Then let's look at facts. Professor Gibbons was the only man who knew the location of the throne. He was also a member of the missing scientific mission. And what does that prove, monsieur? Nothing except that two million dollars is worth a lot of risk to some people. I'm afraid I do not follow you, monsieur. The path of your logic is very faint indeed. No path too faint to follow if those men are still alive at the end of it, Inspector. If you don't believe me, check with a couple of million natives in the Pacific whose future welfare might be set back a generation if those scientific findings are lost. Okay, Inspector, there's the schooner. Let's go aboard and look at some other facts. Very well. Maybe they'll help you change your mind. Well, perhaps, monsieur, though I'm inclined to doubt it. Well, I, I thought you said the ship was deserted. The light is shining up the companionway. I left Pagan on guard. His bravery in the presence of dead bodies goes only so far. And it's non-existent in the dark. So, 
Uh, the phone is in the main cabin. Yeah, right in here. You can face some facts for yourself. Huh. What is this, Thurston? Your idea of a joke? My sense of humor is better than that, Inspector. But this room? Yeah. No Pagan, no Beaumont, no throne. You have there our entire file on the case of Professor Gibbons, Monsieur Thurston. We investigated everything, even the earth found on his shoes and clothing. Is this your laboratory's analysis of that earth? Oui, Monsieur, but... Uh... Uh, mostly silica, high... Alkaline rating, 85 pH. Yes, yes, point. yes, but we got nowhere. So far as we could tell, Professor Gibbons disappeared aboard that plane and reappeared in Segon out of thin air just a moment before he died. All of which brings us right back where we started from. Ah, and that is? The key to the missing expedition. That lies on the missing throne. Ah, Monsieur Thurston, you still pursue a will of the wisp. Guesses, theories mean nothing without facts to back them up. Oh, pardon. Inspector Rabbe, qui parle? Dear pardon, Monsieur Inspector. We have just uh, picked up a crazy man out of the river. So, where is he? Right here in the other office. He keeps raving, muttering something about an Uncle Achmed, a very peculiar piece, monsieur. What shall we do with him? Let me handle that one, Inspector. An old maniac friend of mine. Oh, but of course, if you wish. See you later, Inspector. Good night, monsieur. All right, Pagon, come along. We've got work to do. <laughs> Mr. X, it was stuffed in that cabin. I went up on the deck for a breath of fresh air. And somebody did what I've often been tempted to do. Huh? Conked you over the head. Mr. Thurston. Well, anyways, the next thing I knew, I'm making like a fish in a river. I never want to see boats and water again. That'll make it kind of tough for you. You're going back to the docks right now. Huh? I want you to hire a speedboat, Pagan, with a cruising range of at least 60 miles. What are we going to do? I'll let you know as soon as I see a geologist and find out what... Silicon 85, pH 10.5, rarely means. There's no doubt about it, Thurston. From the analysis you've given me, that soil can come from only one place in Indochina, the island of Kwailung. Kwailung? Where's that, Harry? It's a volcanic uprost some 20 miles down the coast. Geologically speaking, it's a beautiful specimen, but unfortunately, it can't be examined. Why not? But it seems the Japs left it booby-trapped with countless landmines. Several tourists were killed there last year, and the authorities have barred it to the public. Oh. Uh-huh. I hope I've helped you, Thurston. Sort of makes up for the way I behaved earlier. But may I ask what your interest is in this soil? Professor Gibbons died in Saigon, Harding, but the dust on his shoes came from the island of Kwai Lung. <laughs> Some steamboat, eh, Mr. Thurston? She handles like a charm, Pagan. Where'd you get it? <laughs> what does it matter? And Zellschmidt always knows where to get luxury items. With other people's money, yes. Yeah. Which is besides the point. I got you the boat. We're going out to that one long island. Quite long, quite Whatever long. Whatever it is. And, and, and we're both happy. Except me. Oh? You don't tell me things. Why did you have to see this hiding to get the dope on the island? <laughs> the police geometrist told you the same thing, even while I was with you. Just double-checking. On report? No, no, on Hardy. What a suspicious character. I bet you suspect everybody. Even me. Especially you. Thank you. This is the speedboat to Eileen Nelson's yacht, isn't it? Speedboat to... Um, well, of all the ridiculous... I, I never heard... How did you know? So she's standing right behind you. Don't be silly. How could she? I left her in the dark after that. Miss Nelson, you trip across me and please put down that gun. Let that be a lesson to you, Pagan. Never trust a woman. Never trust the Zeus, Miss Eileen. Well, now what? Now that I've learned where you're going, where the throne is, I'm taking over. Any argument? Oh, no. Just a word of advice. Watch out for this wheel. It pulls a little to port. Oh, oh you fool! We're heeling way over. We... Let's have that gun, I. <gasps> a pretty smart trick, Ken. Drop that thing or drop the thing it away from you. <gasps> no. No, Ken. You don't have to take it away from me. I'll drop it. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. X. I have the wheel. We're back on course again. Good work, Pagan. Are we back on course again? Mm-hmm. What's that supposed to mean? It's still holding me. And you know I like it. 
quite a change of pace, I mean. It's not really, Ken. Remember last night at Le Chanois? Remember what I said about a certain moment being worth waiting for? Well? Maybe we won't have much longer to wait now. Let's talk about that when this is all over. No, don't waste precious time, Ken. What? There's a seaplane flying overhead, following the same course. And if it's flying where I think it is, you and I may never leave the island of Kwai Lung alive. Mr. Thurston, I, I don't like this. How can we land in this place? People get killed here by bombs and things. Not even know where to land, Peg, huh? What kind of a talk is this? Who knows where to land? That oil slick in the water is going to tell us. Huh? I don't get it. It seems to be flying out from that underbrush, Ken. Yeah, and that's where we're heading. Mr. X, you're driving this thing right into those bushes. You're... Ken, you were right. A harbor's behind the overhanging brush. Yep, complete with landing docks, sea plane and all. That's where the oil slick was coming from. What are you going to do now, Ken? Look for the part of that plane. Huh? And the throne of T. Neen. And the missing expedition. Ken, was it smart to leave Pagan alone on the dock? No, it would have been smarter to leave you there, too. Not for me, it wouldn't. Don't trust me? I trust no one where two million dollars are concerned. Huh? Hold it, Eileen. What is Ken? Look down that slope. The small clearing over there. The small... Ken, look at them. Yeah. Ragged, bearded, in chains. The men you were looking for? Yeah. Brilliant men of science, chained down there like animals. Oh, thank God they're still alive. Save your thanks, Thurston. They won't be for long. Inspector Abbey. Yeah. That's the executioner's gun in your hand, Abbey. It is, Thurston. I've had it ready, waiting for you. But you disappoint me. You do not seem the least surprised at my being here. Why should I be? Your own geologist knew that the soil and given the shoes came from here, but you made no attempt to investigate. Ken! Sure. He knew Gibbons had hidden the throne, and when he learned Gibbons was off on that scientific mission, he decided to go after it. Quite right, Thurston. It was simple to board that plane at Singapore with my police credentials. Even more simple to dispose of the crew and fly the plane here to Kwai Lung. Only give him fool stubborn, didn't he, Abbe? He wouldn't tell you where the throne was hidden. And when he escaped from here and made his way to Saigon, you caught up with him and killed him. All right, Abbe. Ken, no. Stand back. Your time will come soon enough. Yeah, like Beaumont. What happened there, Eileen? Did Beaumont make a deal with you to get the throne aboard your schooner? Yes, Ken, but I didn't trust him. I went looking for you. And while I was away from the ship... Yeah. Abbe had him killed. The throne was put aboard the sea plane, and Abbey flew it out here today to keep under cover until it was safe to dispose of the jewels. You are a very clever man, Thurston. Unfortunately for your own welfare, you are too clever. So the time has arrived for that execution, I mentioned it. What the devil? Sounds like somebody's latching onto your throne, Abbey. No, no, it's not possible. Let's argue later. Oh. Ah. A flyer shouldn't let plane engines distract him, Abbey. Look what happened to you. This is no time to admire your handiwork, Ken. We've got to stop that plane. Well, it's not going anywhere. Not go... What do you mean? Pagon can't fly. Pagon? Sure. I didn't know whether Abby would show his hand while we were here or stay hidden. Either way, I figured that motor starting would bring results. It did. So, Ken, as usual, Mr. X has successfully completed his mission. And now what are your plans? Hmm? Well, it depends on what turns up, I think. And if it should be the author of a South Sea Island cruise that turns up aboard a good seagoing schooner named Thor Thunder? No, no. I'm afraid not. Oh, but why not? We're two of a kind, roaming the byways of the world for danger and adventure. We play the same kind of game, Ken. Oh, no, Eileen. I was gambling for those scientists. You and Abby gamble for two million dollars against the future welfare of two million people. No, Eileen. Things we stand for are on opposite sides of the fence. A constant battle between them. You said it yourself. With no holes barred. Good night. 
Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, came to you from Hollywood. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, voice of information and education.